Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I greet you all and would like to thank the Parliament of the Republic of Ireland for a warm welcome, hospitality, and also for organizing this conference. Dear colleagues, it is known that parliaments reflect demands and represent changing dynamics of society. In this sense, society that rejects discrimination, exclusion, and intolerance has better chances to involve diverse groups into public life on equal terms. In this regard, let me share with you the experience of Azerbaijan. First of all, about women and young people. Having been granted the right to vote back in 1918 ahead of most European countries, women in Azerbaijan possess equal rights and freedoms as men. Today, Azerbaijan has made considerable progress in empowering women. Young people also through various state support programs and development strategies have already reached the level of participation needed to positively influence public life. Thus, we are witnessing consistent increase in percentage of women and youth participating in winning municipal and parliamentary elections and taking high decision-making positions. With regard to ethnic groups, it should be stated that in Azerbaijan, representatives of various ethnic groups have been living together in dignity, peace, and friendship for centuries without any discrimination. Today, they actively participate in all spheres of public life, including representation in parliament. Dear colleagues, it is undeniable that state of peace and security is essential to the rule of law, democracy, and inclusive development. And respect to principles of sovereignty and territorial integrity is the foundation that underpins it. Importance of principle of sovereignty and territorial integrity were highlighted in this conference yesterday. Regretfully, there has been a tendency to neglect these principles in the case of Azerbaijan. This is quite a challenge for European democracy when double standards are demonstrated on the issue of respect to these basic principles. Ladies and gentlemen, let me clarify some points. After liberating its territories from 30-year-long Armenian occupation in 2020, Azerbaijan has initiated normalization of relations and signing of a peace treaty with Armenia on mutual respect for sovereignty, territorial integrity, and inviolability of borders. For three years, Armenia has been using all means at its disposal to violate the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Azerbaijan, such as military and political provocations, planting landmines, sustaining separatism in our territories. Armenia's 10,000 strong armed forces in the Karabakh region of Azerbaijan and existence of a legal puppet regime were the main obstacles to achieving peace and stability in the region. For the last months, Armenia tried to manipulate and mislead the international community on the basis of false and groundless allegations on the so-called blockade or humanitarian crisis in the Karabakh region. Simultaneous passage of goods to this region through Agdam Khankendi and Lachin Khankendi rose on the offer of Azerbaijan nullified these allegations. On September 19, Armenia resorted to yet another military provocation, which resulted in the death of six Azerbaijani citizens. In response to this provocation, Azerbaijan launched local counter-terrorism measures, targeting illegal military formation and military infrastructure. Civilian population and facilities were never attacked, and any claims in this regard are groundless. Counter-terrorism measures achieved its goals in less than 24 hours. As of now, armed forces of Armenia are being withdrawn from our territories. Separatist regime has dissolved itself. This armament process, which still continues, has revealed the terrifying scale of illegal militarization of our territories. Ladies and gentlemen, reintegration process of ethnic Armenians of the Karabakh region has already started. Two meetings of the special representative of the government of Azerbaijan with representatives of Armenian residents has been held in a short space of time. Upon the instruction of the President of the Republic of Azerbaijan, His Excellency Mr. Lamaliev, a working group led by Deputy Prime Minister 
deals with social, humanitarian, economic, and infrastructure issues in the region. Humanitarian aid, including food, medicine, and fuel, has already started being provided to local residents, along with deliveries by International Committee of the Red Cross via Lachin Hankendi and Ardam Hankendi roads. Ladies and gentlemen, we firmly believe that this integration process will be successful. Nobody forces ethnic Armenian residents to leave Karabakh. There is not a single fact on it. Those who leave do it by their free choice. And I would like to underline, all rights and security of Armenian residents will be guaranteed in line with the Constitution and the international mechanisms to which Azerbaijan is a signatory. Ethnic Armenians who have been hostage to criminal regime for 30 years will have a better life and will again live together with Azerbaijanians in Karabakh region in peace and harmony. Thank you very much.